Today, let us share the words of God under the subject, the Church of God that received the Holy Spirit of Pentecost. What do you think is the mission of the Church? Isn't the mission of the Church to save souls? If a Church does not have the promise of salvation, that Church is useless. No matter how splendid its outer appearance is, and even if flowery words are overflowing, what if the Church doesn't have salvation? The Church has no life. The mission of the Church is to share the salvation that God has promised to all mankind. Wouldn't you consider this to be the responsibility of a Church? According to the 66 books of the Bible, what Church has received the Holy Spirit of Pentecost? The Bible says it is the very Church of God that we attend. Everyone, did you all confirm that through the Bible? It was in the Church of God that the Holy Spirit of the early reign of Pentecost came down upon. The Holy Spirit of the latter reign, too, is to come down upon the Church of God. The Bible says that God promised salvation to the Church that received the Holy Spirit and granted all the testimonies of salvation to the children of Zion. On the Pentecost, what did God grant to the Church, which the twelve disciples, including Peter and John, attended? God bestowed the Holy Spirit on that Church. Then, other than that Church, if any other Church claims to have received the Holy Spirit, they are liars, aren't they? Only the Church, which has received the Holy Spirit and has been clothed with God's power, has salvation. So what did God ask that Church to do? Spread the Gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth through the Holy Spirit and save the world. God has granted the truth that can save the world to the Church that has received the Holy Spirit. Only the Church of God that is recorded in the 66 books of the Bible has received the Holy Spirit of Pentecost from God and is delivering salvation to the world. Having confidence in the fact that Peter attended our church, Paul attended our church, and Jesus established our church, we must spread the gospel to all people, saying, Come and visit the Church of God. Believe in Christ An Sang Hong, and you must believe in New Jerusalem, Heavenly Mother. It's because this is what the Bible testifies to. Except for the church that Peter and Paul attended, is there any other church God promised salvation to? No. The church that Jesus established and that Peter, John, and Apostle Paul attended is the only church that has received the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the promise of salvation. Through that church, God leads all people to the eternal kingdom of heaven. That very church is our Church of God. Today, let's confirm these matters one by one sharing the words of God together. We should all be convinced that the Bible testifies to that. When you look around, can you find any church that recognizes the day of Pentecost and worships having a correct understanding of the Feast of God? No. Why not? Think about this. Although this feast is in the Bible, why don't they keep it? The only church that received the Holy Spirit is the Church of God. Furthermore, the only church that Jesus asked to spread the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth is the Church of God. Jesus said, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. The church that received the promise of salvation is also only the Church of God. 
We should take pride in this. To others, God said, I never knew you. But only to which church did God promise salvation? The church of God. That is why the mission of preaching the gospel of God was also only entrusted to the members of the church of God. When this gospel spreads, the salvation that God promised will be bestowed on the earth. Then in order to save the world, who must rise up? We must do it. Until the day when Father comes to the earth, all children of Zion must ignite their courage and put forth their best efforts to spread the gospel in Samaria and to the end of the earth. Today, I have just told you that the church must have salvation in it. Then, through what can we testify that the church of God has salvation? Let's find out about this. First, shouldn't we examine if the forefathers of faith were saved in our church? As for the people who attended the church of God, according to the Bible, there was Peter. And who else attended the church of God? John attended. And who else? There was Paul. Everyone. Was Peter saved or not? What about John and Paul? Yes, they were. Then, it is certain that God promised salvation to the Church of God. Also, who is entrusted with the mission of preaching the gospel? It is also the Church of God. No other churches are given the mission. Isn't this a special privilege from God? So it is written, do not add or subtract from the words of the Bible. Let's confirm this through the testimonies of the Bible. Today is the Pentecost. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 2 and see which church the Holy Spirit of Pentecost was poured out upon. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. We can see how God's special grace is given on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. It is written, filled the whole house where they were sitting. Let's go to Acts chapter 1 and see what kind of people gathered there. In Acts chapter 1, verse 12, it is written, Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were, who? Peter, and who else? John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. About 120 people gathered there. On the church, Peter and John attended. God poured out the Holy Spirit. We should be able to discern which church the Holy Spirit descended upon and what Christ asked the church that received the Holy Spirit to do. Let's see one more verse about this. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria 
and to the ends of the earth. Let's take a close look at verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To whom did he entrust his mission? We need to clearly see which church he entrusted this mission to. All churches claim that God entrusted this mission to them. But that's not true at all. As Jesus entrusted the mission to Peter, John, James, and Matthew when he was taken up, we need to focus on the church they attended. God would definitely say, pay attention to what church Peter attended, and pay attention to what church John attended. Then, all people will be able to recognize which church they must attend to take part in the salvation God prepared. Let's move on to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, and see that part in detail. Verse 7, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent who? Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. There was a church that was attended by Peter and John and established by Jesus. Regarding that church, Jesus said, On this rock I will build my church. What feast does that church keep? It is the church that keeps the Passover. Even by looking at this one thing, we can easily distinguish that it is the church where Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit of the early reign and which was entrusted with the gospel mission, can't we? Which church preaches the truth of the New Covenant Passover? There is no church other than the Church of God. All of this is taking place in the Church of God. Peter, John, and Apostle Paul, who received the truth later, were all members of the Church of God and received salvation. Jesus promised them, You may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. They are the apostles who received Jesus' promise. We just need to find out which church they went to. Then today, among the many churches, which are like the sand by the seashore, we can easily distinguish the church that is qualified to be saved and enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. While preaching the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, don't we introduce our church by saying, our church is this kind of church, so come to our church. Let's see verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Through the truth of the new covenant Passover, God proclaimed the church of God is the true church. That's why 2,000 years ago, the Church of God kept the New Covenant Sabbath, the New Covenant Passover, and the New Covenant Pentecost, and today as well. In this day and age, why is it that all people need us? It's because Christ has given us the mission to save the world. People need the Church of God as the path through which they can draw near to God. It's the only church entrusted with the gospel mission and brings people into the arms of father and mother by preaching in Samaria and to the end of the earth. This is our church, the World Mission Society, Church of God. Then, not only 2,000 years ago, but also right at this moment, the Church of God is the only church God allowed to carry out the great work of salvation around the world on His behalf. It's so obvious, isn't it? 
Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Apostle Paul quotes the passage in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, saying, Am I not preaching the Passover of the New Covenant to you now? Corinth was a Gentile city far from Israel. Paul preached the gospel even to the Gentiles, saying, I'm now proclaiming to you the New Covenant Passover that our Lord taught us. Paul celebrated the Passover that Peter and John kept. Aren't they all apostles who attended the same church? What's the name of the church they attended? Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to what? The church of God in Corinth. Each church was named after its location. The Church of God in Corinth. The Church of God in Ephesus. The Church of God in Smyrna. There were the churches of God in different regions. The Church in Ephesus. The Church in Smyrna. The Church in Pergamum. The Church in Thyatira. The Church in Sardis. The Church in Philadelphia. The Church in Laodicea. Each church was named after the region where it was located. As the church was located in Corinth, the Bible calls it the Church of God in Corinth. When God fulfilled His mission on this earth and went up to heaven, He provided the Church of God with the power to save the whole world. What's the mission of that church? Let's take a look at Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will what? Will be saved. Thus, every teaching that the Church of God preaches is a message directly related to our salvation. Those who reject the message of salvation will not be saved but condemned and those who accept it and are baptized will be saved. Jesus firmly made all these decisions and then ascended to heaven. It's not because we are smart that we have found God's commandments and are keeping them. Since this is the church God has established, we're preaching the gospel in Samaria and even to the end of the earth, aren't we? Let's take a look at Mark chapter 16 once again, verse 15 and 16. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will what? Be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. This gospel from the Church of God is the gospel of life, the gospel of salvation which the whole world must receive. So we must go out and preach to save the world. We must not remain silent, but preach wherever we are, in neighborhoods, at work, in the military, and at school. It's because God has given each of us the power to save even one soul. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost is a blessing bestowed upon the Church of God. Heavenly Mother said, Today you have all received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. I earnestly ask all of you, people of Zion, to engrave the words of Mother deeply on your hearts once again 
and preach the gospel to all people in the world so that you can bear abundant good fruits for the rest of your life here on earth. Now let me conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.